الرحمن الرحيم. My first question is, what is the first question in the next slide? When you see this verse, what is the immediate question that comes to your mind? Why have these names been repeated again? We've just seen these words being mentioned in Bismillah, so why have they come again? So what's important to note here is that anything that comes in the Qur'an, forget the Qur'an, anything that we even speak, the words and the sentences that we speak, usually they fall into a particular context. And that context usually has an impact on the definition or the meaning of what we are saying and the intent behind it. So if we look at the words Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, when they come in Bismillah, what are they following? They're following the word Allah. The context over here when we talked about Allah is that Allah has chosen this name to mean the name that consists of all the different perfections. It is that manifestation of all the positive attributes contained with this name, uh, within this name Allah. So Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim are coming within that context. That Allah may be saying to us that of these manifestations, of these perfect attributes that are contained within the word Allah, two of them are Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim and these are very, very important. Okay? And obviously that needs a research of its own as to why specifically those two names. It could be said that the other attributes all stem from his Rahmah and that is the reason he mentioned this, but it would need some more research. But that's the context of them appearing in Bismillah. What is the context that we are in within this surah? We have just started with the Bismillah and then we have said Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The last word we have used is Rabbul Alameen. That nurture of the worlds, the one who takes everybody to perfection and everyone and everything and in whichever realm that they exist in. Now, if you remember when I asked you the definition of Rabb, we said that Rabb traditionally is translated as the word Lord. And we said that Lord isn't really the actual definition of the word, but it's part and parcel of it. Because somebody who takes somebody else to their perfection and removes all the deficiencies and fills the gaps and their shortcomings and nurtures them, naturally they are going to, dom they're going to dominate over them, they're going to have management over their affairs, they're going to have some sort of authority over them. So all of these things are also part and parcel of him being a rub. And so this might make us feel that, hold on a second, which type of a rub is this? Yes, he is taking me to my perfection, but is he the kind of rub like we see in this world where we have kings and dictators who are, you know, trying to improve society or, you know, make their countries progress or their communities or whatever it is, and some of them are very harsh and some of them are very dominant and some of them are very tyrannical. But Allah says He is Rabbul Alameen. Which type of Rabbul Alameen? He is the Rabbul Alameen who is Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim. So if we look at some of the verses, we see Wala Yadlimu Rabbuka Ahada. And your Lord does not oppress anyone. And you can see the word Lord. You can see the word Rabb is used in this verse. And it's trying to remove this misconception that the Rabb can be oppressive. And here we get this clue that this Rabb is not someone who oppresses. Rather, if we go back to Surah Al-Hamd, he is Rabbul Alameen who is Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. If we go to the second verse, وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ And your Lord is not oppressive to the servants. And the same message is being brought over there. Now there's also another reason why Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim have been repeated over here. And that is because in Bismillah, we were invoking that name when we were beginning the action in order to reach its goal, etc., etc. But here, if you look at the second verse, the second verse started with Alhamd. It started with the praise of Allah. And we talked about what are the reasons that we are praising Allah. What Allah has now done for us is given us two other reasons as to why we should praise Allah. Just like Al-Jannatu Lil-Muttaqeen, the Jannah is for the Muttaqeen because they are Muttaqeen. Alhamdulillah, because he is Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, because he is Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, ar rahman ar rahim We praise him not only because he is the creator of all goodness, not only because he is Allah, the possessor of all perfection, not only because he is Rabbul Alameen, but we praise him also because he is Ar-Rahman 
the one who gives mercy to all of his creation, and he is Ar-Rahim, the one who gives a special mercy to the selected people. So these are also reasons that we are being given as to why we praise Allah. Mm-hmm.